Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another Perfumery Basics video and in today's video I want to introduce to you a new updated version of the online Perfumer Formula Calculator. So if anyone's familiar with the last video that had the uh, the open source online calculator, uh, it basically was just an all-in-one stop uh, where you can just go ahead and create your perfume formulas and it has all these awesome automatic calculations uh, and just kind of like a, a simple database as well tied to it as well as, and also an IFRA uh, restriction checker. Um, so with this new update i wanted to give it a more kind of updated look something a little bit more user friendly i've got a ton of requests from the past uh video that people kept requesting all these different things so i just wanted to give this whole thing just a, a new fresh take and kind of uh, revamp it from the ground up and start over fresh uh, so i had a ton of great ideas from everybody that i incorporated into this thing uh, so once again, this is a, uh, it's an online document which is uh, sourced and hosted on Google Sheets or Google Spreadsheets. So the beauty of that thing is, is because it's hosted online with technology today, people are constantly on their, you know, their smartphones, their tablets, or even on their home computer. I mean, the old school way of, you know, doing your formulas on a, on a notebook or a piece of paper, it's fine. But with today's technology, I think, uh, Something like this kind of takes it to that next level where you can take your perfume formulas wherever you go. I mean, if you have your smartphone and it's on a Google Sheet, you can just take all your formulas wherever you go. So no, no need to, to carry out, you know, carry any paperwork or any notebooks around with you anymore. It's just all, it's all digital. Uh, so what I did with this new updated version was I've kind of went through and scoured the internet and I found a ton of great free online uh, you know, perfume uh, calculators, perfume formula sheets and stuff like that. Uh, there's a, a bunch of perfumery forms like base notes. There's a ton of contributors on base notes that had their own ideas of a, a formula spreadsheet. Uh, per, a perfumer's apprentice, if you sign up and take their classes, they, they provide you with a spreadsheet. Perfumer's World has a, an awesome online spreadsheet. So I kind of took all these spreadsheets and kind of considered everything holistically. And I wanted to revamp this new one from the ground up and kind of take the best of everything that I've seen and kind of exclude some of the things that I found or deemed were not really necessary, or at least in my opinion, how I use this. So with this new calculator, hopefully it's something that's gonna improve your perfuming skills. It's gonna really open your eyes and kind of see in more detail what is in your formula. Uh, there's so many different ways and so many views in this new, in this new version. So now, for all the new people that are just downloading or accessing this for the first time, I strongly, strongly encourage you to watch this video for the full extent. I know it's a 30 minute video and it's long, but I'm gonna go through every step by step in this, in this uh, perfume formula spreadsheet so you know how to use it because there's gonna be a lot of functions and formulas in here that if you're not familiar or if you're not an Excel, Microsoft Excel wizard, you probably not, not really know what's going on or how to use this but I've kind of made it foolproof. Uh, so when you get into it, you, there's only a couple things that you need to modify, or when I mean modify, I mean basically you just go in and just start adding your ingredients and everything just kind of works itself and does it for you. But I need you guys to watch the full length of this video and uh, to fully understand how to use this because I get bombarded with so many questions on the old calculator, how to use it, and it's just from people not really watching the video to its full extent. So watch the whole thing. It walks you through how to use it step by step, and it explains every single function in this entire formula spreadsheet. So uh, without further ado, I'd like to you know say a big thank you to all the online perfumers who have you know given uh, free online open source spreadsheets open to the public. So that's what I'm also doing with this spreadsheet. It's gonna be free to use. You can go in, copy it and download it, use it for yourself, share it with your friends, share it with your other perfumers that might wanna use it. Once you have it, you can feel free to modify it to your likings. Uh, do whatever you want with it. It's a free and open source formula calculator. So yeah, without being uh, too hesitant here, let's dive right in and I'll walk you through this entire formula spreadsheet step by step. So let's get started. All right, everyone. So upon opening the perfume formula spreadsheet, uh, you'll notice that there's three tabs and we'll get to those in a little bit. 
but the first thing that you're probably gonna want to do when you first open it up is just click on file and then click make a copy. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make a copy for you and store it on your own Google spreadsheet or your Google Drive. Cause right now when you open this for the first time, it's just a read only version. That way I don't want people messing with this. Uh, but when you do click on file, make a copy, it's gonna make you a copy on your own personal Google Drive, Google spreadsheets that you can then just start editing or modifying this however you like. So. Uh, the first tab we're gonna look at is called My Perfume Formula. And you'll notice there's a very big, large gray header. And the nice thing about this header is as you scroll through, it stays persistent at the top. And you can go through this entire formula here. And the, the formula header here just stays stuck to the top. This way, I kind of made it like this because as I scroll through and I'm adding you know, individual ingredients, I want to always see these headers so I know that these numbers match up correctly to the headers. Uh, if this wasn't a sticky header, then you it's just a nightmare to remember what column does what. So I made this a sticky header. Uh, so the first thing you'll notice, we'll just walk through the header real quick. You've got your dates. Uh, you'll want to enter in the date that uh, you first created this perfume. Uh, the perfume name, obviously you'll name your perfume whatever you want. I've also, like on this example, I've added V1.2 because I also make so many revisions and different trial runs of uh, perfume that I make different versions and I always label and save them as separate sheets what version it is. And then here, there's a description in brief which you can just type in a, a brief description of what you're trying to do with this perfume, what's the scent profile, uh, is it geared for like a man's fragrance, female, is it unisex, is it a summer scent, a winter scent? Just try and be as descriptive as possible. So now looking at some of these headers here, we'll take a look at the top. This section here is your finished perfume in weight, uh, which is by grams because when you're using a, a formula spreadsheet like this, you'll want to be using a scale with it. So you've got your total weight in grams, which is, encompasses everything that you put in your total perfume, which is all your materials, all your you know, essential oils, absolutes, including dilutions, which is you know, your ethanol, perfumers, alcohol, and any, anything like that. So then the second section is concentrate only, which is also in grams. And this just tells you how much of the total perfume uh, what is the grams weight of just the concentrate of just the raw materials by itself, excluding any dilutions? And then of course here at the top there's finished perfume percent. And this just tells you when you're all done adding all your materials and you actually add in your perfumer's alcohol to you know, give the final dilution, that it calculates for you this is your final perfume concentration. If you're going for an eau de toilette, you can do like a 10% EDT. Uh, you can do an EDP, which is like 15 to 20%. You can do Parfum, which is like 30%. So that's, it's really up to you, but the top right here just tells you what your final perfume concentration is gonna be. So looking at all these in the header, so the first section is gonna be your dilution. And the dilution section right here is your dilution for your actual materials that you're adding in. So if you're looking at, like say, this musk blend decor that I've put in, in here as an example, it's actually in a pre-diluted bottle. I pre-dilute this down to 25% because I'm working in such smaller you know, batch sizes that I don't use a lot of materials neat or at 100%. So this section here just lets you do, it. you type in your material, dilution and then it calculates how much is actually going to be diluted by alcohol. So this musk blend decor that I'm using was a 25% dilution. If I was using let's say a 50% dilution I can type in 50 and it calculates it down here automatically. So we'll go back to 25. Now this next section here this is going to be your actual formula and formulas you know in perfumery is something that uh, it kind of just dictates you know the actual amount of in, uh, ingredients that compose the actual overall perfume formula itself 
So, but I have it separated in two ways because I've seen so many perfumers share their formulas either in a raw format, meaning the formula is in raw, meaning all of the materials listed are undiluted in their raw natural state. And then some perfumers actually share it when it's, you know, they include all their dilution. So if they're using something like, you know, this Damascone Delta is a 10% dilution. So you can see here, the, the formula actually looks different. So the formula in the raw of just the uh, Damascone Delta would be eight. And in the formula with dilutions, because it is pre-diluted, it actually comes out as 20. But this calculates it based on everything that you actually add in for all ingredients. So it's automatically calculating that for you. But the most important thing is right here, when you're doing your formula, every perfumer has a specific preference on a formula total. Some perfumers like to use uh, formulas in parts of 100. Some like to do parts in 1000. I have this default set to 1000, but you can certainly always change this to 100, which I'll do now. And when you change it to 100, you saw these numbers change. So the reason why I don't like to use uh, a formula in parts of 100 is because if you're using trace amounts of a particular material, they don't necessarily show up in parts of 100 in a formula. So like Damascone Delta is a really, really, really strong material. So let's say I was using this in a 1% solution. If I change that to one, you can see immediately the formula raw, it disappeared. So I'll go back to 10. It shows up as a one. And then if I change this to 1000, there you go. Now it's, it's actually showing it a little bit more. So I always choose to do formula in parts of 1000 because when you're using very, very small trace amounts, they're, very, they're more noticeable and you can easily see them better in a formula that shows parts per thousand. This next section is gonna be your grams added, your amount. And this is actually what you're just gonna be adding in as far as how much of each material you're gonna be adding into your formula. So if you're weighing your stuff on a scale, you put a drop in, you weigh it on the scale, you, you actually put in your measurements here. So Damascone Delta, I put in one drop. You'll notice I actually have a little drop section here. And on my scale, it came out to 0.17. Musk, I put in five drops, it came out to 0.150. So this section here is where you actually add in your amount of your material that you're adding in. This next section is gonna be weight based on grams. So of course you need a scale for this. So hopefully you guys are all using scales if you're using a formula worksheet, you know, of this nature. So the it's broken down into two parts because again, I like to see things in so many different ways that this first section shows you your material raw, the grams weight of just the raw material. So let's say if I was using this musk blend at a hundred percent neat, I'll change this to material 100. So I added 0.15 grams. So the material raw is still 0.15 grams because that's how much the raw material you're, you're putting in. The material with dilutions right here in grams is still 0.15% because there is no dilutions. But what happens is if I added in a pre-diluted musk blend at 25%, same amount of grams, now the raw material is now 0.038. So 25% of 0.150 is 0.038. So this shows you the actual amount of raw gram weight of each individual material that you're adding in. This section will show you the actual material including the dilution, which is, you know, it could be ethyl alcohol, DPG, IPM. So that's showing the total weight of each individual including dilution. This one is showing just the raw material excluding dilution. This next section we're gonna look at is percentages. And this is now another view, because I know people love to look at things in a percent kind of value. So we've got percent of raw ingredient in the finished perfume. So basically that just means 
what is the percent of these individual materials in the finished perfume after I've already added in all my dilutants, my, my you know, ethyl alcohol to make it like an EDT or an EVP or something like that. This will actually show you what is that percent of these individual ingredients in the total finished perfume. And this is important to me because it's showing a percent of the raw ingredient. And this is really important if you're gonna be doing like IFRA restriction checking. And IFRA restrictions basically always state like certain materials you can't use X amount of percent in a total finished product. And this is basically what it's telling you right here, all these different percentages. So if you know what your R I, ugh, if you know what your IFRA restriction is, you can easily identify it in this column here based on the individual ingredients. The next column is the percent of raw ingredient and the concentrate. Now this is the ingredient or the material by itself in relationship to all the other raw materials excluding all the dilution. So it's just another way to kind of look at it. So if you're like, I wanna know, you know, in my perfume raw concentrate, how much Demoscone Delta am I using? In this particular case, I'm using 0.83%. But if I account for all the ethyl alcohol and all the other dilutions in the total perfume, you'd be looking at this column. So it's actually, you're using 0.2% of Damascone Delta. So it's just two ways to kind of look at this. And then of course, this last column, it's not a very important column to me and I don't use it often, but some people ask to see this. And this is the uh, percent in total perfume. And this is basically the percent of this particular ingredient, including its pre-dilution, in the final perfume, you know, total volume. So it's just another way to view this. And then this last section here, which is your IFRA check. And what this does, it's a pre, kind of like a prefabricated uh, uh, section that you don't actually have to put anything in these cells or in this column. It automatically calculates for you based on what you add in here. So this one, Damascone Delta, I'll actually zoom in a little bit so we can see this a little better. It says, in the finished product, it's restricted by 0.043%. So, let me zoom back out. Now, when this pops up, it automatically pops up. So if I can see if I can do a uh, Mosquitone. No, that's not it. Well, as you add other materials, it will automatically populate this for you and pull up the IFRA max, you know, restrictions. So you see this and then you can immediately go to this cell, the percent of raw ingredient in your finished perfume and kind of compare apples to apples and be like, well, IFRA is saying this item or this material, I can't use more than 0.043 in the finished perfume, but here I'm using 0.2, so I'm way above that allowance, so I need to lower this amount, or if I add in more materials, it will eventually lower this value for me, and I'll be back into a safe IFRA, you know, restricted allowance. Uh, this section here is your notes and comments. You can come in here and just kind of type in anything you want. And it's just basically individual notes and comments on materials. I try to keep it as vague and general as possible. Just when I'm blending, it's like, example here, it says musk, stay 50 and under. And basically what that means is, in my total formula raw, all my musk combined, whether if I'm using one musk, two musk, three musks, the total of those musks I try to keep 50 and under in the formula. So, I mean, obviously this one says 184, so I'm way above, but this is a very in incomplete formula. And once I add in more materials, this value will go down. But it just gives me a general guideline of, you know, where I should stay in, in the mix of things. But again, you can always put in notes and comments of whatever you like. I just put in random notes that just kind of keep me in check. This last section here, common material use percent. This is another automatically populated uh, cell. So you can see here at the top, the it's got a, uh, an Excel function that automatically populates this for you. 
So as you add in materials, let's just do cedar wood, for example. Boom, it automatically populated. This particular material is used on average like 20% max in your concentrate. And these are just general guidelines that you would use. Now, obviously in cedar wood, you can go above 20% max. Uh, these are some things that I've just found like using going on uh, the goodsensecompany.com and, and usually if you're your supplier that you purchase your material, sometimes they supply you with information of the usage of the material. So I've added this in the calculator. So as you add in materials, let's see if we can do, oh, let's try gamma octal. There we go. Gamma octalactone populates as 12% max in concentrate. So you can just kind of see that things automatically populates for you. And it just kind of keeps you on track as far as while you're blending, you can get, you can kind of gauge if you're kind of overshooting or undershooting a specific material in your formula based on just general averages and, you know, common use that most people use these materials as. Okay, so now looking at some of these other sections, we're, we'll take a look at this top section here. Obviously it's all strictly base notes. This is a section just for base notes. Uh, you've got your drops. If you want to record how many drops you're using, if you're doing small blends, uh, this section here is where you add in your individual materials. You would just type it in, or you can select it from a drop down here. Uh, it's pre-populated with your materials that you have in your, your stash at your disposal, which is in the My Materials tab. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So, but the real important key thing that I need to really stress about this is a lot of people that use a file like this are really not Excel, Microsoft Excel experts, and they're kind of afraid of technology and they, they don't know how to use things like this. To make this as easy as possible so you don't screw things up is I have a rule of if it's green, then you're good to go to, to modify it. And that means if you see something highlighted in green, like these are highlighted in green, that's really the only sections that you need to be typing in. Anything else, like in these headers up here, or anything in white, are all gonna be pre-populated for you. They're all based on, you know, Excel functions. So when you come in here and add a material, let's say you're gonna add in Oh, guaiac wood. Guaiac wood, 10% max and concentrate automatically populates. I'm going to add in one drop. And on my scale, I measured that out to be 0 0.018 grams. It is 100% neat because I didn't dilute it. And it just populates everything here for you. And that's it. That Just stick with the green. Just only touch the, the things here in green and everything else will be done for you automatically by Excel functions and, and formulas. So we have a section here for base notes. We have a section here for middle notes and a section here for top notes. Now the one thing that a lot of people kept asking and hounding and requesting me on is I want to see more rows here because I'm adding a lot of materials. So let me just zoom out real quick. And I thought it was crazy because right here, there's probably a good 15 rows for base notes, 15 rows for middle notes, 15 for top notes. So you're looking at about 45 rows of material, you know, line items. And in a perfume formula, most people are scared to use a formula that has like 30 plus line items because then they're like, ooh, it's getting out of control. It's so many materials in here. And I've gotten so many requests where people are like, I need more rows. I need, you know, 50 rows per section. I need 100 rows per section. So I was like, okay, fine. You want more rows? We'll put in more rows, but we're gonna simplify this. So in here, you've got your 15 rows per section to add in your materials. But if that's not enough, on the left, there's a little plus sign where you click it and it opens up another section that basically gives you like another 20 rows. And then you can close it. Same thing for middle notes. You can open it up, you can close it. So I have these kind of collapsible. So for somebody that's doing a smaller formula, they have all this room to work with 
and they don't have to keep scrolling forever to get to the end of the, the of the spreadsheet but for somebody that just needs more rows more extra rows they can simply expand the sections and more rows will actually populate in each section of the, the perfume you know top middle or base sections and now this lower section here dilutants and solvents this is basically your last section that you're going to fill out because once you fill out all your base notes, your middle notes, your top notes, your, your perfume formula is pretty much good to go or, or so you think, you're, you, you know, you're giving it a whirl. You're like, okay, I want to dilute this now into like an EDT or an Eau de Parfum or something like that. So that's when you would obviously add in your perfumer's alcohol to dilute your final concentration mix. So all you would do, again, only touch the thing in green. So you would add in whatever grams you're gonna be putting in for your per perfumer's alcohol. And this is a trial by error. So you would actually probably type in something here and figure out how much perfumer's alcohol you would need before you actually go ahead and add it. So let's say if I wanted an EDP concentration at 15%, in order to do that in this formula, if I added in 0.1 grams, my final perfume concentration says 49%. Well, let's do one gram, 16.6. Well, let's do 1.2 grams, 14.34. So if you do 1.15 grams, we're getting roughly now to the 15% range, but you can see what you're doing here. You can put in your amount that you want to add in first before you actually add it into your your concentrate and f and then kind of gauge okay this is what adding in this amount will give me x amount of a final perfume concentration and for final perfume concentrations actually listed here and also listed here at the top it's the same number i just wanted it listed there twice because it was another request that people had that when they open the file they don't want to scroll all the way to the you know, to the bottom to figure out what, well, what's the final perfume concentration of this blend. So they can see it here, or, you know, you, it, you can see it here if you're working on your file, you know, working from top to bottom. So it's just two ways to kind of view this. And this last section here is just a more visual representation because people love visuals. It's just a nice little added touch. So you've got two charts, two ways to kind of look at your raw material percentages. This first one is note percentage breakdown of your raw materials, no dilutions of your complete concentrate. So basically what that means, exclude all your pre-dilutions, exclude all your perfumers alcohol. Just if you just want to look at what is my percentage of my top, bit, uh, middle, and base notes of just the raw materials itself, this will automatically populate for you here. And that's based on every, you know, every line item that you put in. Every time you put in a line item, this will update and this will update. They're always going to be updating and automatically calculating for you. This section here is the same, it's almost the same concept as this but it's now, instead of a note breakdown for top, middle, and base, we're looking at the formula note breakdown of raw materials with no dilutions. So for somebody that says, I wanna look at what's my formula breakdown based on top, middle, and, and base notes. So this one here now shows my base notes in my formula, which is set to 1000. This, this chart here goes up to max 1000. You've got 257 parts per thousand is base notes, 540 parts per thousand middle, and 203 parts per thousand for top notes. So it's just two different views because some people like to view things differently, so I, I wanted to incorporate both. Okay, so now that's it for this tab. So the next tab here, my materials, which is probably the most important thing. This tab here is actually going to be your perfume material database. This is a list of all your materials that you have at your disposal that you're using at your at your blend, your perfume house, your your uh, oh what do you call it? You know what I mean. Your uh, organ. So I'm gonna view out of this so we can see this a little bit better. Now this column here 
Oh, just as a, as a side note, before, before we dive into this, when you first gain access to this actual copy, all of these materials are gonna be already listed in here for you. This is all the materials that I have at my disposal here at my home. So this will already all be in here. All this data is already in here. But what you're gonna to wanna to do is add in your materials that you own that are not in this sheet. You can simply do that by selecting a cell, insert a row, and obviously just type, type away and start putting in all your things. So let's take a look at this tab. So we've got column B, which is all your list of ingredients in alphabetical order. Columns C and D is your primary and secondary scent profiles. Now every ingredient to me has a primary scent, which is obviously the, the first main thing that you smell. The secondary scent is the more slight kind of facets that you might pick up on it as well, but it's not considered a primary. So if you take a look at something like cardamom to me it's primarily a spicy scent but it does have slight woody facets to it so i have the primary set to spicy secondary is woody cashmeran to me is a primary it's a musky kind of scent but the secondary to me is spicy and as you go to uh, go down like citronella its primary is floral with small citrus facets to it so it just kind of goes through. So as you're going through your stash of things and you don't quite know what you're putting in your perfume formula. So instead of kind of going through your, your organ or your stash and just opening bottles and just sniffing everything, you can come in here and be like, well, I need something fruity. So I can filter this by, you know, whatever facet or whatever scent profile. This next section here which is your notes, obviously your top, middle, and base notes. Here I have it broken down into two sections. So you've got your primary note and your secondary note. Now, not every material is going to live in just one note, you know, section. For example, let's take a look at balsam oil. It is primarily a base note. I mean, that is for sure true and true base note. Benzyl acetate, for example, though, its primary is a top note. It's a quick evaporative kind of top note, but it has noticeable effects in the middle as well. So I did have it set to top and middle. But you can kind of, you know, play with these as you like and put in, when you put in your own materials, you can set these to whatever you like. Section G says use and notes. This is more just like a free for all, just put in just basic generic notes that you want to put in for any specific material. For me, like um, I like to put in just notes of like usage, like cashmeran in my formulas, I generally like to stay or keep cashmeran at 50 to 70 parts per thousand in my formula. So I just make a little mental note here. Uh, cinnamon aldehydes I use, oh, Cinnamon aldehyde, cinnamon leaf are my cinnamon builders when I'm building cinnamon accords. Um, Desmocone beta I use as my rose builder. It's part of you know a small amount in rose. Ethyl vanillin, I just put strong vanilla. So you can put whatever you want for notes in here. I, I use like usage and I also put in just generalized notes that are kind of like, hey, this is like a special note for this particular material. Column H is your scent characteristic. And this is a very, very descriptive scent characteristic profile. You can get this from usually whoever you purchase your, your materials from, usually when you're buying it online, they usually list what it smells like. So you can just copy and paste it in here. Uh, if they don't do that, you can go to thegoodscentscompany.com. They always have scent characteristics on all their materials listed on their website. So it's just a, it's a basic, yeah, scent characteristics. I mean, Cashmeran, I have it listed as it's slightly powdery, it's diffusive, it's velvet, amber, and musk with a strong floral, fruity, apple red fruit undertones. I mean, you just try and be descriptive as possible. Okay, so here we have odor strength. And odor strength is just a generalized, kind of like a, hey, look at me. Like, if there's a very high odor you know, strength, something like Calone, very, very high odor strength if you're trying to use it, it like meat. So I have it listed as high. A lot of these materials that you're gonna have in your, in your database are gonna be medium to low, 
but you do want to point out when things are very high, like your aldehydes, your C12 aldehydes, super, super high. So I point them out in very, very bold, dark letters, high. So when I'm going through my material list and I'm kind of trying to gauge what material I want to use, this will grab my attention be like, all right, this is a very high odor profile. I need to consider that. J and K is your longevity. J is your longevity based on hours on a paper strip. K is longevity on hours on skin. So again, these numbers are things that you can get from your retailer where you purchase your materials from or just go to the goodsensecompany.com. They list all their longevity on paper strip. The longevity on skin is actually just a pre-calculated formula that I just took the longevity hours on paper and divided it by 15 to give me a rough estimate of what this material would be on your skin. So if I'm looking at something like, oh, let's see, where is, Embroxin crystals, 400 hours on a paper strip, roughly equates to about 26 hours on your skin. So that's like an all day, like a 20, full 24 hour wearing on your skin for Embroxin crystals. Column L is your impact. And impact is kind of like your odor strength, but it's given in values. And this is just a way to gauge if you're trying to do, if you're trying to marry accords together and certain things, obviously if it's a low odor impact, you need to add more of it. And if you're combining it with a high odor impact, you obviously have to add a lot more to it. So it's just a number value. And this was something that Perfumers World kind of started. And it's useful to some, but not so much to myself, but I included it in this spreadsheet because, you know, why not? It's just more data to look at. The more information you have at your disposal, the better. So basically the numbers just represent, the lower the number is, the lower the odor impact or odor strength is. Obviously the higher the number is, the higher the odor impact. So looking at your C12, Lorik and M&A, high, you know, high odor impact, 600, 700 comparing it to something like Ambroxan crystals, which has an odor impact of 50, which is very, very low odor profile. Now, column M, which is dilute, and it has a question mark on it. And that basically means, hey, should I pre-dilute this material before I use it? And if it's blank, that means you, you're pretty safe to use it neat. You can probably use it neat and be safe. But if there's anything in here, like 10% or less, one to 10%, 1%. This is like an indicator like, hey, you're gonna wanna use these materials pre-diluted because they're really strong. Column N is your CAS numbers. CAS numbers, basically it's like a, in the perfumery world, it's your materials, uh, like a UPC code or something. So each material has its own unique CAS number and it's just useful to have in this, in this spreadsheet because if you run out of an ingredient, let's say if you're out of Bactanol from IFF and you wanna buy it, whoever you're buying it from should list the CAS number and you wanna make sure you're getting the same material or ingredient as you had previously. So make sure the CAS numbers match. These Last two sections, O and P, are probably the most important, what I consider, in this whole entire tab. So column O is IFRA restrictions. And this is where you would actually put in your IFR, IFRA restrictions on the individual ingredients. So you would get this information, A, from your retailer that you purchase it from, or B, uh, you can go directly to the IFRA you know, website and they list up-to-date information on restrictions on cosmetics and you know, perfume materials. So looking at like something like Carvone L has an IFRA restriction. It's restricted that you can't use more than 1.2% in the finished product, meaning you can't use more than 1.2% in the total finished perfume. So all these ones that in this database already have all these pre-populated, but it's very important that when you add in your own materials and your own rows, you're gonna wanna populate this because this row here is actually what populates this automatically. These rows have an Excel function that kind of look into this tab 
and pulls this information into here for you. This is why these appear automatically. <coughs> so if I'm looking at, let's see, Damascone Alpha, let's just type in Damascone Alpha, POW, automatically populated, 0 0.02 restricted. Damascone Alpha, oh, look at that. 0 0.02 restricted. So that's why this is important to, you know, keep it up to date, keep it populated, because if you don't keep it populated, then this whole, this whole column is going to be useless to you. This last section is average use. And again, when you're purchasing your materials from your retailer, they usually list on their, you know, their product description, what is the average use of that specific material, or you can go to the goodsensecompany.com, they list it there as well. So these average uses, it's just a general guideline. There's no hard rules in this, but it just gives you a, an idea of where you should gauge your material when you're using it, how far you can push it before you're like, okay, I'm probably using too much. So looking at something like ethyl vanilla cr crystals, on average, the average perfumer would probably use up to 8% max in their perfume concentrate, not the finished formula, in the concentrate by itself. So again, if it's a winter perfume though, and you want a very heavy vanilla smelling, you know, perfume, you can obviously go higher than this because these are just recommendations. These are not restrictions. They're just average use recommendations, but it's important to fill these out as well because these is actually what's populating in here. So if I want to type in vanilla and crystals, look at that automatically populates 8% max and concentrate, which is 8% max and concentrate. So you can see where it's pulling the information for, for you. So as you're adding your materials and you're starting to add in your blend and you're looking at your overall kind of composition, you can look over here and be like, well, it's 8% max and concentrate. So here's my percent of raw ingredients and concentrate. I can gauge and kind of see point two, well, obviously that was way over, so I can go 0 0.05, still too high, and then you can kind of gauge where your, your, your individual material should be based on average uses. Like these are just average use based on like everyday perfumers that use this. This is based on averages. Okay, so that's pretty much this entire tab here. This last tab is called Useful Links, and this is something that you can always add to this. It's just, if you need to go to thegoodsensecompany.com to research, you know, certain materials, if you want to grab CAS numbers, IFR re restrictions, or if you want to just grab basic material information, you can go here and click on that link. It'll take you straight to it. I've also listed here some retailer and suppliers where I like to buy my perfu uh, perfumer, ugh, can't even say it, perfumery materials. Uh, but again, feel free to add to this. You can always add more to this. Once you gain access to the sheet, it's yours to use, yours to, to modify to your liking. This is, it's an open source, you know, calculator. So once you get it, it's yours. So, uh, yeah, so that's it. That's pretty much the entire, you know, spreadsheet. So again, I, I thank you for sticking this out for the full 30 minutes of walking through it, but it, I, I can guarantee you it's going to be very informative to you. And for the people that probably didn't watch this full video and they just downloaded this and just started trying to, to work with it, probably accidentally broke some functions and they're going to email me and say, hey, this doesn't work. How do I fix it? Thank you for sticking through the full 30 minutes of this video and checking this out. So again, so once you actually gain access to this sheet in the link in the description of this video, the first thing you're going to want to do is just click on file and just make a copy. And that's going to make a copy for you. And once you make a copy, you can then start to modify, edit, add materials and do that. When you first click the link, it's just a read only copy. So the first thing you do, file, make a copy. And remember, I can't stress this enough. If it's green, you're good to go to modify or edit. So, and if it's white, 
that means stay away. Don't overwrite or type anything in these files. Just remember, green is good. If it's green, you can type in there. Everything else is gravy. So with that being said, I hope this uh, tool kind of finds you well and fi you find it useful. Uh, again, it's a free open source downloadable, you know, calculator spreadsheet that you can use for yourself once you gain access to it. If you want to modify it and switch rows around and add different formulas, feel free, go ahead. This is, it's all yours. It's open to the community to do what they, what they like, what they please once they gain access to it. This is just the, the raw template of, of how I use it, how I uh, like to see things. So hopefully it works well for you. So with that being said, uh, happy perfuming. Thank you.